Today we're cooking this pork butt, Texas barbecue style, real simple rub, 24 inch woodwind. I have a new technique that I'm gonna do where we're gonna wrap it, I'll show you that in the video too. So we've got about a 10 pound pork butt here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim the majority of this fat cap off. I don't need this much fat on it, but I do want a lot that way it's basting itself while it's barbecuing. So we're just gonna come through and take small cuts off the top until it gets to roughly the thickness that I want it to be. Don't cut too deep when you're doing it. Thin slices, each pork butt's different. Each one's gonna trim up a little bit different. You just kinda have to have an eye for the thickness that you're going for depending on how long you're gonna smoke it. Just make sure it's nice and even across the top, not that hefty fat cap. It's okay if you have like a little bit of the pork showing through. Let's get into our binder on our rub. For the binder, I'm just gonna use some regular old olive oil. All I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of a squirt on top, rub it all around, a little bit of a squirt on the bottom, rub it all around, make sure you get your sides. I already patted my pork dry after I trimmed it, and this is it. If you wanna use mustard, you can use mustard. Totally fine and doable. So with my spice rub, I'm doing more of like what I think a Texas style would be. So we're looking at two parts coarse cracked pepper, one part salt, and that's essentially it. But what I've done is I've come back with some whole granulated garlic, some granulated onion, and then a little bit of cumin. That's it. And then just whatever you want to do, if you want more cumin, you could add more. If you want to hit it with some paprika or cayenne, that's great, spice it up a little bit. This is really simple. There's a lot of fat in this, and the way it's gonna smoke down and render, I feel like that's where my flavor is coming from. This rub smells super amazing, and I love how it's a little bit more coarse than your regular powdered rubs. Just the way that garlic and that onion meets with that coarse grind black pepper. Now I'm making sure that this is evenly coated. It's got a relatively thick, even coating on it. I've learned this the hard way. If you end up with this extra spice rub on your cutting board, I don't like using it anymore. And the reason being is it clumps up and then it doesn't form properly with the bark and you end up with a really salty bite. That's very specific to brisket or ribs where you're slicing something. Whereas this, we're gonna shred later. That might be a little bit situational on this because it's gonna get completely mixed in. But I would recommend not using that on your ribs or your brisket if it ends up on your cutting board. Now that I've got this completely seasoned, coated all the way around with my spice rub, looks really nice. It's been resting for a couple minutes with that rub on it. Kind of like it's starting to dry brine. You can tell it's absorbing it. The liquid's coming out. Pretty soon what's gonna happen is it's gonna start sucking that liquid back in. Um, watch other videos that I have about dry brining, guys. Super important technique. Um, we're just gonna throw it on the grill. I've got the Woodwind 24 here. 30 set to 215 degrees. Right in the middle, I'm gonna take my thermometer. Now with this technique, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it smoke just like this, high smoke, 225 degrees, until it hits about 160 inside. When it hits 160 inside, I'm gonna check it for a bark. If it's soft on top and there isn't a bark, it's gonna keep going. But once it hits 160, once it has a nice bark on it, that's what I'm looking for, then we're gonna wrap it and I'll show you how to do that. So we've been cooking the pork for a while now. I wanna make sure that the inside of the pork is at least 160 degrees. That being said, let's check the bark. You can, there is a bark on it. So my next step with this process specifically, is I'm gonna take some rendered bacon grease that I've been saving. I'm gonna pour that right over the top of it. You don't need a lot, just enough. We're gonna wrap it. Nice and tight. We're gonna set it back in the grill. Now I'm not gonna touch it until it reaches about 200 degrees. And when it reaches 200 degrees, 
I'm gonna insert my thermometer. I'm gonna kind of move it around a little bit and I'm gonna feel for the toughness of the pork. If the thermometer moves around really free, nice and sliding through, that means it's done. You pull it, you throw it in a cooler, set it on the counter, let it rest. Hour, two hours, period, that's it. Let it rest. That way it reabsorbs all of that bacon grease, all of that natural fat that's in it, everything sets up on it, and it's gonna be lovely and amazing. And as for the wrap itself, pink butcher paper, this stuff, brown, pink, whatever you're using, um, the reason why I use that is it allows it to maintain the bark and continually breathe. Whereas if I were to wrap it in tin foil to try to get it through that stage, it's going to steam it more, braise it more, keep that moisture in, you're gonna lose the bark. This will keep that bark until the very end. This bad boy has been resting. We're gonna unwrap it and take a peek at it. Let's see if we can slide this bone out. Just like that. Don't need that. And then uh, you can see before we shred into it, really great bark. Let's see if we can uh, hear it. So really great bark still, even though we've put grease on it, We've wrapped it, we've let it rest in the cooler for a few hours, still great bark. And then, there you go. And this has been resting for a while. You can see the steam, the smoke coming out of it. It's actually to the point where I can't really grab it, so I'm just gonna use this spatula to just break it apart a little bit. Let's give it a taste test. Look at this bark. I'm gonna grab some of that and just mm. Mm. you can taste that coarse grind it's not too salty oh it is so moist and tender it comes together perfectly you guys need to try it at home try it like this we're going to come out with a couple recipes on how to use the leftovers too so check out those videos here and then check out other camp chef videos here thanks for tuning in see you later Ha, ha, ha.